brother uh, can you can you please start the recording yes sir it's it's on yeah, okay it's, it's already there okay cool sure um all right so good morning sir i'm all so let's get started today just a quick recap of what we did yesterday yesterday we learned about um, <clears throat> two key topics in natting nat right network address translation so network address translation and uh, in the world of network mean that you know you are translating from one address to another address okay so the packet when the packet comes you are translating that packet which is having an ip address of source you are translating that from the source ip address to something else and you are sending it out that's why you see that i gave an example of how it actually works at, at your home in your router and when we have uh, aws and uh, how uh, in aws it works right so where you have got uh, ec2 instance with uh, in a public subnet will have two ip addresses one private one public right how the private will <coughs> get translated as public and eventually when it goes out it goes out as a public ip address right so similarly uh, when uh, you want to have allow egress internet access Okay, I mean you. You guys have to understand, learn these terms very well. Okay, ingress and egress. Ingress means inward traffic. Egress means outward traffic. Okay, so you have to use these actual technical terminologies uh, more more frequently, which are commonly used across the industry. Right. So uh, for all egress traffic, you know where you want to have internet access, not for in e ingress, not for incoming. You want to have allow outbound internet access on your EC2 instances. Uh, a way to do that is using a NAT instance. Where you provision a NAT instance using the AMI that AWS provides, uh, um, and and also and then you go and you disable the source destination checks. Why do you disable source destination checks? Because it is neither a source nor a destination. It is just a pass through device. Okay, uh, your NAT instance is just a pass through, because usually what happens is in networks, uh, a device acts as a source and the device acts as a destination, correct? Because network is basically giving you flexibility to, uh, you know, communicate or send the traffic from a source to the destination. So from that standpoint, what happens is uh, you have, uh, you know, you disable the source destination checks on the uh, on the NAT instance, right? And then you go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, configure your route table for in your private subnet to have 0, 0, 0, 0 sent to the NAT instance. So that any traffic that comes, which has, which is an unknown IP address, right? Or which is a, anything non-specific IP address, which is 0, 0, 0, 0 goes through the NAT instance, NAT instance simply passes it through the internet okay. gateway to the outside world. Excuse me, sir. Okay, then we also looked at NAT instance has got limitations because you have to maintain that NAT instance. And you have to uh, basically uh, uh, <clears throat> manage and uh, monitor and patch it and do all of that with for a NAT instance. That's when I gave you an example of fully managed service, which is there called NAT gateway. You can use the NAT gateway to provision a NAT gateway. You don't have to do anything. It's just one simple screen where you go provision the NAT gateway and then you get the NAT gateway up and running and then use the NAT gateway and attach your NAT gateway to uh, uh, in, in your <coughs> private route table where you send the traffic 0000, 000, 000, 000 to the NAT gate. Okay. That's that's what happens. That's how you know you're able to you know provide internet access, outbound internet access to your EC2 instances. Okay. This was another architecture diagram that we spoke about yesterday. Okay, all right. So that's a quick recap from yesterday. Let's do most of today. Let me go to VPC. Okay. 
So today, what are we going to look at? We are going to look at uh, uh, DHCP option set and DNF. Okay. All right. So let's first start with the DHCP. Um, what is DHCP? Can somebody explain what the DHCP means? Provides a static IP to the instance. Provides a static IP to the instance. No, that is not right. It does not provide a static IP. It provides a dynamic IP to the EC2 to your, your endpoints to your devices. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it assigns right. the IP address in the private network. So to all the devices, it assigns yeah. some IP address and maintains that table with that protocol. Right. So what does DHCP stands for? Dynamic What's Host that? Configuration, configuration Protocol. Okay. So, um, so some, somebody was answering it as static IP, right? Sorry, who, who was that? I'll explain that further. What, what is static IP and what is dynamic IP? A58. A58. Okay, all right. So, um, so A58, if you actually look at your, you, do you have a laptop or a desktop at home, right? Which is connected to the Wi Fi router? Uh. Okay, so now, uh, what, what will happen is your Wi-Fi router is actually a routing device, right? So where your Wi-Fi router is actually acting as a routing within your home network, okay? Yes. So now in your Wi-Fi router, you will have a range, right? Probably 192.168, 1 1.0 slash 24. Usually it's a slash 24 range, right? So where you have, you get about 256 IP addresses in a slash 24. Yeah. So what happens is uh, in that slash 24 range, um, there is something called DHCP service, which is running in your router. Okay. And when a new device gets connected to that router, the DHCP protocol, which is running in that device, uh, looks at the pool of IP addresses it has. So it has an IP address pool, right? From 180 to 168, 1.1 to 1.254. Forget about yes. 254 and forget about 1.1 because 1.1 is used by the router itself. I think the rest of the uh, component, rest of the IP addresses are free, right? So it has this pool of IP addresses which it maintains. Uh, the moment it sees that you know there is an IP address free, uh, it takes that IP address and it allocates it to the client which it which it is connecting, or connecting to. Okay. Okay. So now okay. that and what DHCP also does is it basically issues a uh, a lease. It's something called lease, DHCP lease. It issues a lease saying that this IP address will expire after probably the lease completes, maybe 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever it is. Okay. So now when the lease gets expired for this IP address, the, the, your computer or mobile or laptop would again go register with the router saying that, uh, hey, my lease, Piece is expired, can you issue a new IP address to me? So next time what it does is it again looks up at its uh, IP address pool. Uh, it picks up one free IP address and then it allocates that IP address to the client. <coughs> that's, that's why it's called dynamic. It's not static, okay. you're not assigning a static IP address. Now, if you want to assign a static IP address, then you have to basically, uh, you know, uh, you, you have to assign it at the network adapter level. Okay, you have to open uh, the yes, network sir. adapter settings and you have to assign a static IP there. I'll show how to do that. But uh, that that's the difference between a static IP and dynamic. So in this case, the static IP never changes. So when you assign a static IP at a network adapter level, you should also ensure that, you know, no one else takes that static IP uh, or DHCP does not assign it to someone else. Uh, so that you know it becomes a conflict because you can't have uh, two IP addresses, two same IP addresses in the same network, right? Okay, all right. So now, even in AWS and VPC, uh, there is 
TNTP. Okay, I'm just sharing my screen back. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Sir, if we deleted the EHPC, is there any problem, sir? So, but if you delete a Yes, sir, yesterday I deleted this thing. No, no, your voice is not clear. Can you repeat it? Sir, what did you delete? Yesterday, yes, sir, yesterday yeah. I deleted this uh, in AWS. AWS. Hello? Uh, I'm not sure. What did you delete? Can you repeat? DHCP, sir. You deleted DHCP. Okay. No problem. Yes, you sir. can recreate it. Yes, can sir, it. You. That's not a problem. Okay, sir. That's not a problem. Yeah. But which one did you delete? You deleted the default DHCP option search? I think, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Same thing, sir. Okay. You deleted this one. That's okay. No problem. You can create a new one. Okay. Yes, sir. You can create a new one. But, but usually, if you see, this is the default DHCP option set that is provided by... AWS. Okay. Anyways, we'll come to that. I mean, I'm not sure what happens when you delete that. Yes, sir. Okay. So now let's get to the bit of a concepts on DHCP. So DHCP is basically a protocol called Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It provides a standard for passing configuration information to hosts on a TCP/IP network. Okay. The options field of a DHCP message contains configuration parameters including the domain name domain name server and the NetBIOS node type. Okay, so now, uh, so, so when you say host configuration, right? It is not just about IP address. It is multiple other things also, because you are uh, uh, fully qualified domain name, right? How many of you know what a domain name is, right? I mean, in probably a network, if you see, uh, you have uh, ec 2 internal. So if you guys actually go back to EC2 and stuff that you have provisioned, if you see the FQDN of the FQDN means fully qualified domain name. Okay, so if you look at, I'll fire up both my instances. Yeah, if you see this. Uh, this is my IP address. Uh, and there's something called DNS, right? So DNS is nothing but it's, it's a domain name server, right? So, uh, so which identifies like, for example, if you want to hit google.com or amazon.com, you don't remember the IP address of Google, right? You just go to browser and then you, you hit google.com. And then you, you hit uh, amazon.in, right? And then it immediately pulls up the page for you, right? So what happens behind the scenes is there is a translation that is happening, lookup that is happening for the domain amazon.in to that IP address where the server is hosted. Okay, so that's how it is able to get it. Now, if, if you want to know what, what does, where does amazon.in point to? And let's look up. This is the IP address of Amazon dot in. This is the IP address of Google. Okay. So coming back. So there, there are a few other things that are there with respect to your EC2 and stuff like your DNS name, right? In this DNS name, if you see anything after the dot, right? So that's called the domain name. Okay. In this case, since it's just an internal, which the VPC that you've created, you can just give a domain. Uh, it, it, it by default has a domain name of dot region dot compute dot internal. Right? That is the domain name that it gives. Okay. But you can change all of this. Okay. You can change all of this using uh, uh, DHCP option sets and you can change all of this using having your own domain, okay? Again, Microsoft has got a, uh, you know, an LDAP server, okay, it's called Active Directory, okay? Uh, it's called LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, right? So when you, 
set up a organization and when you have employees working in your organization each employee should have his or her account right to log into the systems right and you should, you should there should be a directory correct so that's why you, that's that's when you'll be able to uniquely identify each employee <clears throat> using their login credentials correct so that's called ldap ldap lightweight directory access protocol there are several ldap products available but the most famous one is microsoft active directory okay so you will get you will uh, read uh, you, you can read about active directory just google for it just get a basic understanding of what an active directory means and how active directory works and things like that okay but it's a it's a directory services where you have a dire active directory installed in your in your network people will be able to log in have their username password in active directory and they'll be able to log into uh, the active directory um, into the, into their desktops laptops or their computers to the ldap credentials okay and then ldap actually authenticates the users plus not only that any common shared network resources can be uh, granted privileges through your network ids okay that's that's where you know it comes so so now active when you deploy an active directory on an ldap you need to give a domain to it right so for example i am starting a company right called uh, uh innovation okay innovation is the name of my company right so i will actually my i will give the name of my domain as innovation.com okay and my local domain name will be innovation.com and my uh public domain will also be called innovation.com okay so so that's that's where you know you need to understand that um you know it, this this is nothing but a configurable domain name so here what what happens is in dhcp options you can basically give a domain name and when you have a domain name <clears throat> you need to have a domain name server okay dns which will have the records like for example right i mean ip n hyphen 0 hyphen 2 hyphen 8 dot ap south 1 dot compute dot internal this points to this ip address right so this mapping will be present in the dns domain name server okay uh so that's that's how you know you describe the instances that's how you you are able to uniquely identify the instances okay so now in in the case of um, vpc you have got a dhcp option sets uh, which provides a way to pass the configuration information to host so when your ec2 instances is provisioned you know uh, what aws does is through the dhcp option sets uh, the vpc will pass the details of the host to uh, to the host so that the host can configure itself in such a way that it can take an ip address and it can take a domain name uh, from the uh, domain which is there okay so look at dhcp option sets as a dhcp server right i gave an example of uh your home router which has got a dhcp server running inside that right so that dhcp server will will, will be responsible for allocating the lease of ip addresses to various clients which is connecting to that right so look at it similar way right? here in this case dhcp option sets is nothing but it's a dhcp server at the vpc level okay so let's read about it a little more the amazon ec2 instances that you launch in the non are private by default they are not assigned a public ipv4 unless you specifically assign one at during launch or if you modify the subnet public ipv4 address attribute by default all instances in the vpc receive an unresolvable host name that aws assigns called ip hyphen the private address instead of dots it's hyphens right so that's what we are seeing here also right you see okay. you can assign your own domain name to your instances and use up to four of our own your own dns server to do that you must specify a special set of dhcp options to use with your vpc okay so now what you can do is you can uh, assign your own domain name right here instead of is ap south1.compute.internal 
okay so now i'm going to create one which says uh, rpl dot edu or rpl rpl dot ed uh, org okay or rpl dot io io seems to be quite interesting these days right i will use rpl dot io or rpl dot internal something like that okay you can do that uh, and then what you can do is you can actually give uh, you can assign a domain name server right in this case you can build your own domain name server okay usually large organizations build their own domain name servers where they maintain the records of all the computers that are associated to the domain okay and all the devices that are connected to the domain right and apart from that they also maintain the records of uh, if i if i want if i want to build a website called www. Uh, rpl.in or rpl.io right i need to host this website somewhere right and internally in my vpc some ec2 instance right uh, so now you know you you need you need a way to resolve that rpl.io to that particular ip address right so that's where you need the dns server i gave you the example here right of google is resolving to 142250 amazon is resolving to this right and that's where you know you can actually look at now internally what what happens is uh, first the the request is actually ns lookup is nothing but it's just a name server lookup okay when you pass a uh key here it will return a value okay so now what happens is when you do ns lookup of google.com first it goes to my server internally so this is my router ip address okay then my router ip address will internally resolve to the dns servers of my isp uh probably it is resolving to my geo i use a geo it is resolving to geo so geo will have an is uh, uh, you know uh, you know sir uh, geo will have the dns servers so that dns server in turn will resolve to public dns servers okay the public dns servers will basically return this 142 250 67 142 so there are so many public dns servers one common public dns server is google's dns servers 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. okay you can actually uh, uh, you know look up from 8.8.8.8 also <coughs> directly you can look up from 8.8.8.8 so if you say dig at the rate 8 for it uh amazon dot in yeah so in, so in this case if you see it is actually going through um, uh, google's server okay and then it is returning all the records that google's dns servers has and the way it works is all the public dns servers right they synchronize globally okay when you provision a new when you create a new domain for you one second uh so when you have uh, when i when i say create a new website called www.rpl.io right so that rpl.io record which will point to an ip address like this right? like what, what you see here 54239 um where amazon.in is pointing to similarly rpl.io would point to some ip address right so now this record has to be replicated across the global dns server globally there are so many dns servers that are available public dns servers that are available right and each isp uh, like for example in this case if my isp is google uh, sorry airtel or jio or at&t or verizon or whoever it is right those isps also have got their own dns servers public public publicly resolvable dns servers and then they all have a confederation where they can synchronize all the records from globally across all the global dns servers to their respective servers also okay so that's how it that's how it works and the whole dns resolution itself is a very interesting concept okay so the way the dns resolution happens is when you i just watch 
explain you. Okay, so the way DNS resolution happens is okay. now let's assume it is www.amazon.in or amazon.com. Let's go with dot com. Okay, <clears throat> so now this dot com that you see, right? That is called top level domain. Okay. Uh, so now globally, if you see, there are so many servers, DNS servers available, uh, which has the records that belongs to dot com. Similarly, when you have www.amazon.in, okay, here the top level domain is dot in. Okay. So now what happens is uh, there'll be so many servers, and similarly for dot io dot edu dot org dot in so many tlds that are there right so there are multiple servers available which has the records of all of this okay so now what what it does is it first looks up this and then it finds out which is the server which is holding this dot com okay and then it will get the list of servers for that so then within those list of servers it will search for this one amazon Okay, which which is hosting the Amazon's records. Okay, so then it will take the list of servers which is holding the Amazon records. Okay, and then it will actually route the query to that particular server. And then once it goes to that particular server, it has the actual records of Amazon.com. So now let's assume www.amazon.com is uh, pointing to. So it's called a A record. There are multiple records in DNS. So something called A record. Something called C name. Okay, but let's let's not worry too much about this. I'll just go for A record. So the actual A record for Amazon.com is let's assume whatever that we got here. What did we get? We got this, right? Yeah. So now what happens is first step step one would be uh, your dot com, right? Look up for your browser would look at dot com and fetch the list of servers. Pertaining to dot com, I'm just explaining it in a very very simplistic way. I mean, there's so much more to this, okay, so that you guys can understand this. So pertaining to dot com, right? So let's assume. The list of servers pertaining to dot com are uh, let's let's understand. I'm just giving one dot one dot one dot one, comma two dot two dot two dot two. So these are the two servers on the public, which just holding the records of dot com. Okay. So then what it does is then it goes. It does a uh, look up on look up on one dot one dot one dot one. Comma two dot two dot two dot two, okay, to find which servers have the records of www.amazon.com. Okay, so now the result of this would be it will return the actual server name which has the records of Amazon. Okay, that those are called name servers. So here in this case, it will return six dot six dot six dot six comma nine dot nine dot nine dot nine. Okay, these are the two servers which have the records for Amazon dot com. So then it will go look up on six dot six dot six dot six comma nine dot nine dot nine dot nine dot nine for www dot Amazon.com. Okay, now what this will return? This will return your actual IP address where Amazon.com is posted. Okay, so now that that's how a fundamental DNS resolution happens. Okay, so now you need the DNS servers. Now before even this, right? You need the DNS servers 
pertaining to your ISP, or you can use any of the public DNS servers, which is 8.8.8.8, which belongs to Google. But many times what happens is ISPs have got a DNS server, which is which responds to which responds much faster than Google's DNS servers, than public DNS servers, right? In this case, when I use Google's DNS servers, probably I get the record back in probably about 20 milliseconds, right? But if you use your ISP's DNS servers, you get the record back in about say five, six milliseconds. Okay, so that's how a DNS resolution works. Okay, so now when you create a DHCP option set, you need you also need to give the domain name servers where you want to look up from. Okay, I mean so so for this you need to first set up a DNS server. You need to set up a custom DNS server. You you guys don't have to set it up. I mean these are all advanced topics i mean you don't have to really worry about uh, setting up a dns server i mean if you still want to do it you can do it uh, but again i mean for now it is not of very very crucial topic for you but i'm just telling you so that you know you understand this and you know primarily when you are faced you, you face interviews i mean you need to know what is dns how dns resolution happens because it's a famous interview question okay if you go to um, you know, any, uh, uh, you know, websites that has interview questions, you will see that for systems engineer, for cloud engineer, right, for cloud administrator, the questions will be asked are how DNS resolution works. Okay. How SSL handshake works, how TCP handshake works. I, 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 I'd asked you to read about TCP handshake yesterday. So probably we'll, I'll give an opportunity for a couple of you to come and explain after the class. Okay, so then you have a then you have a domain name. Okay, uh, domain name is like in this case compute dot internal, right? Uh, if you're using Amazon provided DNS in US East one, only in US East one, you would get EC two dot internal. Uh, if you're using Amazon provided DNS in any other region, you would get the region dot compute dot internal. That is basically the domain name that Amazon is giving the default domain name that Amazon is giving. But you can change this domain name. You can, you know, make it whatever, example.com or rpl.com and things like that. You can just make it like that. So that shouldn't be a problem. In fact, you should do that, okay? Because each organization will have their own, uh, you know, domain naming system, correct? Okay, so then you have NTP servers. NTP is basically a protocol for setting time. Okay, uh, like I have my time here, right? 9.39. So this is actually coming from a NTP server somewhere in the internet. My ISP is giving me the time. Okay, so that you know, your local system time, your computer time or server time is synchronized with the help of NTP. It's called network time protocol. Because ultimately everything boils down to time, right? I mean, when you're writing a a bad job, right? And when you want to run that bad job, specifically morning 8 a.m. or morning 10 a.m., you need to know what the time is. And the time has to be synced with the global time. Otherwise, you know, the bad job will fail. Okay, then, uh, okay, leave this NetBIOS for now. Okay, I don't want to have you. The, the important things are domain name servers and the domain name, right? So with the domain name server is where you point to a specific domain name server like this, right? Uh, maybe in this case, you point to Google's domain name server. And Amazon also has got their own uh, domain name servers, right? You can just search for Amazon's public DNS servers. Yeah, this is the uh, 169.254, 169.253. Okay, so, so you can also use that. <clears throat> okay, so let's come back. Yeah. Then let's also look at the Amazon's DNS server. When you create a VPC, 
we automatically create a set of DHCP options and associate them with the VPC. This set includes two options um, where you have domain name servers is Amazon provided DNS and domain name equal to domain name for your region. If you see domain name server is Amazon provided DNS and domain name is apsouth1.compute.internal because I'm in Mumbai region. Whereas if I go to say North Virginia, which is US East one, uh, that domain name will be different. It will be ec2.internal. Yeah, see ec2.internal is only for uh, US East one, okay? Whereas for all the other regions, it is region name. Let's look at Ohio. Yeah. So look at Ohio, it is region name dot compute dot internal. Okay. So let me shift back to Mumbai. Okay, all right. So, and uh, and the domain name is domain name for your region. Amazon provided DNS is a Amazon Route 53 is a resolver server, right? Again, Route 53 is a Amazon's DNS service. Okay, it's a DNS server that, that is provided by Amazon. We'll cover that a bit later, but right now all you need to know is Route 53 is a service like AC2 or VPC. It is a um, global service that Amazon provides for DNS resolution. And this option enables DNS for instances that need to communicate over the VPC's internet gateway. The string Amazon provided DNS maps to a DNS server running on a reserved IP address at the base of the VPC's IPv4 range plus two, right? Um, so, you know, so I, th I think one of you answered it very well a couple of days back. What are those five IP addresses? Can you repeat that please? What are those five reserved IP addresses in the VPC? Sir, first IP address is for uh, network address, sir. The second mm -hmm. is for VPC router. The third is for DNS. The fourth is for future use. And the last IP address is for network broadcasting. Excellent. Okay. Got it. Um, okay. So, so that's where if you see, uh, if you have a 10.0.0.16 range, then you have 10.0002 is for DNS server. That is the DNS server yes. for the VPC. Okay, thank you, thanks. Uh, and then for VPCs with multiple IPv4 CIDR blocks, the DNS server is located in the primary CIDR block, okay? Uh, don't worry about that. You can also associate a multiple non-overlapping CIDR blocks to your VPC. You can, uh, you know, try try all that later. Those are all advanced topics. For now, just understand that you have a VPC, uh, you have a DNS server in every VPC, which is running at 10.0.0.0.2, which is managed by AWS within the VPC. And any resolution, name resolution request that comes, it first goes to the 10.0.0.0.2 server or service. It's, it's a, you can't see that server and you can't manage that server. That is done by Amazon. Okay. Uh, when you launch an instance into a VPC, we provide the instance with a private DNS host name and a public DNS host name if the instance receives an IPv4 address. Okay. Uh, and then if domain name servers in your DHCP options such as to Amazon provided DNS, the public DNS takes the form EC2 hyphen whatever public IPv4 address dot compute one dot Amazon one dot com. Okay, for US East one. Whereas if it is for any other region, it will be region name dot uh, uh, region dot uh, region name dot compute dot internal. So that way. Uh, 
yeah and and if you see this is the amazon's dns server okay actually okay you can just try to even ping it publicly it will yeah but but you can use use that amazon's uh, dns server ip also like how you use google's which is a public dns server again okay so now what we will do is we'll just go to our dhcp option sets so so this is the default dhcp option sets that you have okay so now what what i'll do is i'll actually copy this and i can i can create my own dhcp option so i'll say my dh my vpc dhcp options okay so you have to give the domain name right you have to give the domain name okay here let me just paste whatever i copied from okay see here uh, this is this is the default one which amazon provides right but le let's say assume i want to create my own domain right saying rpl um dot edu okay that's the domain that i want to give i also want to give my own domain name servers where i'm running a dns server i need to provide those domain name servers here then i also need to give it the give the ntp servers where i want to basically have my ntp servers okay and then uh, select an adbios node type you know that's that's fine you can just ignore these for now okay but what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and i'll just use the same dns server of vpc okay and i'm just using the same dns server of vpc right rpl.edu okay instead of uh, so what i have done is what is the difference between the previous one and this uh, in the previous one um the the default one that i have uh, it is it is basically just a uh, the domain name is different is ap south one dot compute dot internal so that's why any ec2 instance that you get that you provision will have ec2 instance dot ap south one dot compute dot internal and domain name server is amazon provided dns in fact i can also do that i can also go edit it or okay, i can't edit it i just have to delete it or i can just create one more saying uh, my vpc dhcp1 hyphen 1 i'll say rpl dot edu or i can just say rpl dot lab let's just say that okay and then here in the domain name server i'll just use the string as amazon provided dns i'll just use the string i'll leave the rest of it blank okay so if you see yeah i'm just using instead of ap south one dot compute dot internal i'm just using rpl dot lab as my uh, as my domain name okay so now what i'll do is i'll just you have to go to your vpc and in your vpc you have to go to actions and edit dhcp option sets uh instead of the default dhcp option sets i'll use my the new one that i created i'll just make on save changes then once once you save the changes it is saved so now if i go whatever ec2 instances that have provision those you can't change the name uh, you have to launch a new instance i launch a new instance use t2.micro my vpc yeah i'll yeah i'll probably put it in subnet 1 itself or i can put it in subnet 2 or private i'll first put it in subnet 2 next uh, add a tag i'll just say name uh domain name test is the name of the instance that i'm giving 
next um, i'll just select an existing one next review and launch launch and i'll use my rpl mumbai lab as the key and i'll just launch it yeah it is launched i just go back okay so now if you see when i select <coughs> excuse me so when i select uh, what are you seeing here you are getting the dns name as ip hyphen 100289.rpl.lab correct because i am using that and uh, you know you will you will see a record created for for it in the dns server for this specific entry okay whereas the pre, the instances that you created earlier had the default domain name okay whereas here you have a dot rpl dot lab as the domain name for the ec2 instance okay so let it launch uh, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go into my uh, putty i'll open my public ec2 instance Uh, each the IP address got changed. I'm going to change the IP address. I'll hit on save. connected so from here i will do an ssh iphone i ec2 iphone user at the rate what is the ip address of this 10289 10.0.2.89. Yeah, yeah, it's connected, correct? So now in Linux, uh, if you want to know the host name, if you want to know the host name, you can just type host name. If you see that host name will have .rpl.lab appended to that. That's the domain name, okay? So now I'll just come out of this. I'll just do an NS lookup, okay? NS lookup is a utility which you can use to know what is the IP address specific to a host, right? This is my host. Okay. NS lookup. I'll just give this. um okay one sec so Let me try solving this. <clears throat> okay, in order to resolve, I need a uh,
Okay, let me do one thing. I think there's some troubleshooting that I got to do here. That's why it's not resolving. But uh, but the idea here is, you know, when you go ahead and uh, provision an EC2 instance, that EC2 instance would get a domain name that you want, okay, which gets resolved uh, by your VPC's Route 53 resolver. And again, Route 53 is a DNS service that AWS office offers. Uh, we will see more about Route 53. In fact, uh, uh, you, you all can actually, I mean, if you if you want a domain of your own, right? You can actually go to Route 53, right? I, I mean, how many of you have got your own domains maybe created in GoDaddy or something like that? A public domain. Any of you have any of your public domains where you have hosted your blog sites or where you have hosted your, uh, uh, maybe your picture gallery or, you know, a lot Hello, of- sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I have, I host it on triple zero web host. Sorry, which one you hosted on? Triple zero web host. Okay, but do you have a domain of your own? Yes, sir, I have. Okay, what is the domain name? Uh, so give me a second. I just... Yeah, sure. So in fact, GoDaddy is a, is a registrar, you know, who actually registers uh, domains. Okay, you can just go register your domains in GoDaddy. Okay, anyways, um, so the idea here is you have a DHCP option sets and you have DNS, right? And in, in your VPC, uh, you also have a couple of options here to edit the DHCP option sets to point it to your DHCP option sets. And you also have an option to, uh, you know, edit the DNS resolution. So when you check this, right, edit DNS resolution, your your DNS, your, your VPC supports resolving DNS, okay? And the edit DNS host names uh, indicates whether the instances with public IP addresses get corresponding public DNS host names, right? So in this case, I have a public EC2 instance, right? Um, I, I don't have a public IPv4 DNS here, okay? Which is which I provisioned earlier, but now I just enabled that setting in my VPC where I went to DNS host names and then I enabled it. So now let me go provision a new EC2 instance. I'll see a public DNS name for my EC2 instance. I can also connect using that. Security group. Public launch. Launch. This is my EC2 instance, which is running. So if you see, it has a publicly resolvable DNS entry. It has a public IPv4 address also, but it also got a public DNS name. Okay. You can also use this public DNS name to uh, connect to your instance. You don't need, you don't necessarily need a I, uh, uh, IP address. Okay. You can use this DNS name to uh, uh, resolve your instance that is also possible right for example i want to connect to this ec2 instance right let me copy this i'll come to putty i'll say new session uh, and then i'll i'll just say ec2 hyphen user at the rate instead of ip address i'm giving the entire public dns name okay this one on port 22 and uh, auth give the key. EC2 user at the rate public DNS, not the IP address. Say open. Yeah. See, you can also connect using your public DNS name. You're not necessarily, you don't need an IP address. But provided you have this setting enabled in your VPC, where it says 
uh, added DNS host names, you have to set it to true. Okay, whereas your private uh, um, private DNS is resolving to ap south one dot compute dot internal. Yeah, that's because it's a uh, it's it's in a public subnet, right? I mean, if you if you provision something in a private subnet, then you will get RPL lab. You will get that in the private subnet. Okay, so now. Uh, you you can read more about this, right? And these are two important concepts. I'll point you to some some more resources like how DNS resolution works. In fact, the whole internet is working on DNS. If you see, because uh you can't uh it's like an address book book in the internet no like you have your phone uh, and you have numbers stored in the phone you can't remember every number correct so that's why you have a uh, contacts and you name uh you you have a name associated with the phone number you just type the name and then you call it calls you don't have to remember the phone number of everybody correct similarly in the internet there are 400 crores ip addresses that are there in the internet right you can't remember all the 400 crore IP addresses and you can't refer websites through IP addresses. You need a name to it, like amazon.com, google.com, yahoo.com, okay, and things like that. So, yeah, so these, these are some good, uh, you know, terminologies that you can I spoke I spoke about the top level domain right like dot com dot gov dot edu and things like that so so that's something that you need to understand this is like root level dot is the root level then dot com dot org dot edu okay then you have a domain name register then you have record types multiple record types like a record a record is always an IP address C name is again another canonical address for another DNS record. Okay, mail mail exchange records, right? So when you send mails, have you ever wondered when you send a mail to somebody at gmail.com or at whatever, something.com, how does that mail reach that person mailbox? Have you ever wondered, have you ever wanted to double click on that and see what is actually happening? How does the mail reach that particular person's mailbox? There are billions of email addresses in the world today, right? Publicly. So how will how will it know that it has to actually it is intended for Prasanna and then it reaches Prasanna's mailbox? Have you ever wondered? Have you ever uh, had the curiosity to know that you know how it actually reaches? You can learn that. Okay, this is a good opportunity for you. Okay, so learn how it actually goes. As part of the DNS learning, learn how when you send an email, how it goes. Right? So that all boils down to the DNS resolution. So see, DNS resolution is a very, very important topic, guys. I cannot emphasize much on the importance of this, but you, you have to learn the learn how DNS resolution works because this is an important interview question. Okay, they will ask you to whiteboard. Okay, they'll ask you to whiteboard saying how explain how DNS resolution works. And trust me, you know, when I take interviews of candidates, I ask them this question without any fail. Okay. And uh, and you should you should know this. I'll give you a few links and just do it. And but but you get so so many articles, you get so much of uh youtube videos will be available just google for it you'll, you'll be able to get that go to you go to youtube look at some articles read that article try to understand what it is it's all simple concepts okay but very powerful
Yeah, this is also a good article actually on DNS. I'll give you this. Okay. So I think let's take a pause here. I think we have the next. Assignment, uh, you know. Create a new DHCP option set in VPC. Uh, give a name to it and give the following options. I'm just going to put a screenshot of that. I'll just create a new one. My DHCP. Yeah. RPL dot LAB uh, domain name server would be your Amazon provided DNS. Yeah. The uh, rest of it you can just leave it blank. Rest of the options can be left blank, create the DHCP options associated with your VPC by going to VPC console uh, options. Sorry, actions and edit DHCP option sets. Actions, edit DHCP option sets. And select your new DHCP option. Okay, go to EC2 console, provision a private EC2 instance in private subnet and check the DNS name for the same, which should have dot RPL dot lab appended. It's a very simple thing, just do that. But most important thing I want you guys to learn is you really don't have to worry too much about this part, but worry about the DNS. Okay. I want all of you to learn how DNS works. Read, read all these articles. Yeah, this is also a good article actually, this ping dumps. Okay. And uh, are there any videos? Yeah, I think this seems to be a good video. Yeah, watch this video. Yeah, this is also good.
Yeah, I'm going to give you this also. Watch these videos. They're all. Okay. All right. So I think logically, you know, we have come to a end of VPC, right? And I mean, all the necessary things that you need to know about VPC we have done, right? So what we can do is from Monday, we can actually get started on the other agenda that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, but I'm just going to give this. So um, th there were a couple of questions, right? Somebody said you are not able to access your putty. Can you share your screen, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, just do it one by one. Okay, I've given the send the assignment in the chat. You can just download the assignment document. Yeah. Sure, um, Sairam so, Ravi. Yeah, I think I think you can just go ahead and uh, create the breakout rooms. Okay. So only a couple of students who had this query, uh, please stay back with me. I'll help you with this. Rest of you can actually go to your breakout rooms and uh, please join Ravi sir there uh, for uh, uh, for the rest of the activities for today. Um, uh, what I want to do is like, I want to add uh, students who have has doubts. I will create a breakout room and I have something to communicate for rest all. So I'll let them stay here, uh, remaining folks. Is that okay, sir? Sure, sure. No problem. So only those couple of students who had issues connecting to UC2 instance can, uh, you know, can just stay with me. So that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Correct. I'm going to put you guys into a breakout room and uh, you can. Yeah, sure. Sure. So we will break out into a separate room as well. Yes. You're saying, right? Okay. Okay. Sure. We will do that. So who, who was that who was having doubt? Uh, is it is what was the ID uh, who's sharing the screen right now? A16. A16, sir. A16. Okay. Yes, okay. One was A16. Who was the other one? Who had issues? 53, sir. What's that? 53, sir. A53, sir. One by one, one by one. Can, I mean, those who need help from me, can you raise your hands so that Ravi, sir, can uh, uh, add you to add all of us to the breakout room and the rest of them can stay here and uh, Ravi sir will continue with his part and his announcements there, here. So just raise your hands, whoever needs help from me, we will all break out to a separate room. Okay, I will initially assign A16, A53, Z011 and once they are back, I can add more people but initially I'll sure. and this. Sure, sure. I'm creating the room now, so please join. Okay, for the rest of the folks, we can uh, actually get your doubts resolved post uh, the uh, session. So right now, today, we are going to have a SQL exam. So this is going to be on, um, uh, this is totally going to be online. Uh, so I'm going to share you all a URL. So you, got, you guys are going to need to click that URL and uh, take the exam. So I'm going to put the URL in the chat window now. Uh, and uh, once you're all ready, 
I need to, I will start the exam. So the exam pattern is um, uh, for 40 minutes. It's a multiple choice question and uh, you need to answer it within uh, 45 minutes. You have 40 questions to answer and you will have uh, 45 minutes. So you need to click on submit. That means you need to um, answer all the questions and answers, all the answers uh, before the 45th minute. If in case you submit, you choose 36 or 40 answers and you fail to submit, you will be disqualified. So make sure you all answer the question before questions before 45th minute of your exam. So I have put the exam link in the chat window. Uh, I will give two minutes for everyone to get ready. Uh, just click on the link and uh, uh, right now I've disabled the uh, exam. Uh, but yeah, very soon you will, I will enable uh, the exam once uh, those two of the students uh, get back to the main session. So Sai Krishna, I will assign you to the breakout room. Just inform them that uh, if any of the students finish their exam, they can come back and join here. So I'm putting you in that breakout room. Okay. Click. Uh, going to zero zero zero. Okay, first of all, uh, you know, all traffic going to zero zero is not the best practice, but that's okay. You have a proper security group. No problem with your security group. Show me the outbound. Okay, outbound is also okay. Perfect. Now open VPC console and show me the NACL. Yeah, open network ACLs. Yeah, show me the inbound rules. Come down. Okay, show me the outbound rules. Come down. Okay, that's that's all all the rules, right? Okay, so now. Uh, go to the uh, route table. This one, sir? No, under VPC, you have a route table, right? Route table. Go to the route table. Yes. Okay. Um, select the public route table. Um, select, come down, select subnet associations, select subnet associations, come down, come down. Okay, no subnet is associated with this. Show me the route, show me the routes, second tab, yeah, come down. Okay, click on the main route table, third one, yeah. Yeah, show me the routes. Yeah, so see, you click on subnet associations. Yeah, see, the problem here is you have not associated any route to go to Internet Gateway. So that's why you're not able to connect to that instance. Okay, so if you open the PPT, open our whiteboarding PPT. Which one, sir? I used to send the PowerPoint, right, every day. Can you open yes, yesterday's sir. PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Go to slide number 15.
Okay. In slide number fifteen, which is the public subnet? This one, sir. That one is public subnet. So now yes. the route table associated with public subnet. What does it have? How many routes does it have? Route table below. You have the route table, no? Public route table. Yes, sir. It has two routes. Yes, sir. So now compare your route table with this. Go back to your EC2 console, the VPC console. Uh, okay, so from just drag that below. Yeah, just drag it below. Yeah. So now, no, no, go to routes. Sorry, just go to routes. Come down. Yeah. Okay, you don't have, but before that, you have to first do that in the public route table. Go to click on public route table. See, I've given a name also properly, right? If you go back to PPT, I've given a name there properly, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so now first go to subnet associations. So edit subnet association. Yeah, select your, uh, yeah, select that. That's it. Which is your public subnet? This one, sir. That is your public subnet? First one. Okay. Okay. Then select that. Yeah. Click save. Yeah. Okay. So now go to routes. Edit routes. Add a route. Give zero 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 slash zero. Yeah. Select the target as internet gateway. Yes. Cancel. Do you have an internet gateway first of all? Yes, yeah, sir. Show me. Go to internet gateways. Ah, see, it is detached to the VPC. First, you have to attach it. Click on actions. Attach it to VPC. Select your VPC. Attach. Go back to route table. Go to public route table. Route, add a route. Edit routes, add a route. Save route. Close. Okay. So now go back to EC2 instance, go back to EC2 console. Go to instances, select that instance. Yeah, now you should be able to connect to this putty. Go back to putty. It's already open. Okay. It's already open. You don't have to do that again. So just go right click on the top bar in putty and the header bar. Yeah. And say duplicate session. Yeah. Or you can also do a restart session. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Click on yes. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. You understood it, right? So now, now you go back and investigate where, where you made mistake. Okay. So sir. I'll tell you the mistake you've made is you didn't attach the internet gateway properly. Number two, uh, you did not have the routes properly configured in your route table pertaining to that subnet. So now go back to my PowerPoint presentation.